Frequency Matters, the RF and Microwave Update Series. I'm Pat Hindle, and you can see I have a full crew here with Kristen Anderson and Gary LaRude. And that's because it's our 50th episode. Woohoo! So we've been doing this for two years now, and I think it's been going twice a month. We've been pretty uh, predictable. So we thought we'd do something different in this episode and maybe look at the trends for 2015. And then we'll show you some bloopers and highlights from the previous 49 episodes. Did we have any bloopers? Uh, oh, yeah, quite a few. It was hard to choose, actually. <laughs> and then we'll finish up with a couple of guest speakers. So we have a lot to look forward to in this episode. And we'll start with the 2015 trends. Uh, 5G research continues to uh, dominate the, the cellular market for the uh, research and development side. And Internet of Things, probably the most hyped uh, uh, thing that's going on in our industry these days. And we had the emergence of the new space industry with the commercialization of space. Right. So there's a lot going on in that market. Uh, but there was a report just in the news about LTE developments. There's 430 commercial LTE networks deployed now, and 100 of them are LTE advanced. So there's an additional 100, and that's kind of a progressive, faster uh, network that's being deployed. So a lot of efforts going into that area. And that represents over 900 million subscribers on LTE networks. And that's expected to grow to 3.6 billion by 2020 when 5G kind of will kick in theoretically. And then in 5G news, we had Keysight Technologies and University of California, San Diego announced the uh, first 64 and 256 element 60 gigahertz silicon single chip transmitter with integrated antennas on it. And they reached gigabit speeds over 100 to 200 meters. So that was a big accomplishment in the area of 5G. A lot of millimeter wave research being done there. So Gary, you're our resident expert in semiconductor market. Uh, what the heck was going on with all the consolidation this year? Well, it's, it's hard to know where to start. Um, what's happening, the semiconductor industry is not growing as it has been. In any industry that starts to mature, it starts to consolidate. So the Wall Street Journal recently published an article that said this year there's been 120 billion in mergers that are either have happened or are taking place. And we saw quite a few of those impacting the RF space. At the beginning of the year, of course, RFMD and Triquent merged to become Corvo. It wasn't too long after that that NXP announced they were acquiring Freescale. That led to NXP having to divest their high power LDMOS business. And so that was acquired or is being acquired by JAC Capital, a Chinese venture firm. And so both of those deals are set to actually close December 7th. Then about mid-year, we heard that what had happened last year, basically Global Foundries closed their deal acquiring IBM Microelectronics. We heard about Avago buying Broadcom, which is supposed to close early next year. And just a slew of these things. I think the most recent one that's relevant to us is John Ocampo's venture firm Gas Labs is acquiring Anadigix for about 32 million, and that should close right after the first of the year. So consolidation, and it probably isn't gonna stop. We'll see yeah. some more of it. A lot of pieces moving around. Right. How about on the uh, semiconductor platform side with GAN and silicon on insulator, how's that all playing out? So I think there are three interesting things that are occurring and should continue to be watched during the coming year. One, of course, as you mentioned, is silicon, whether it's RFC moss or silicon germanium. There's a lot of work going on there, particularly at higher frequencies. So the companies I think to watch there are Peregrine Semiconductor and Anoki Wave. They're doing, both doing some impressive work. In GAN, GAN has pretty much been accepted for military type applications. The interesting part there is, is it really going to break into and become mainstream and cellular? And so MACOM with their GAN on silicon and Corvo with their GAN on silicon carbide are sort of the new entrants in that space. So it'll be interesting to see how they do. And then sort of behind that, you have the RF Energy Alliance really pushing GAN for things like solid state cooking. So it'll be interesting to see if GAN PAs can become enough of a commodity that that market becomes viable. Yeah, it seems like price is really a big thing that they have to address. Right, that's key. And then the third one that I would watch is the whole filter space in the handset. The companies like Skyworks and Corvo and Avago are all growing because of the number of filter bands in the, in the handset. And so that's a tremendous growth potential that's going to continue but there's a lot of pressure to try to figure out how to do it better, maybe change the architecture or have tunable filters. And so there are companies like Resonant, sort of a new entrant in this space, that'll be interesting to watch and see if they can get any traction. Yep, a lot going on. Yeah, definitely. 
And Kristen is our resident uh, digital marketing expert. So what type of trends did you see going on this year? Yeah, I'd like to comment on um, a, a positive trend I've seen in our community, how um, all the people working in our industry are really having more conversation, more opportunities to talk about what they're doing, um, whether that's through social media, the use of hashtags and keywords, and people are finding one another and commenting. Also blogs, a similar uptrend in 2015 in the use of blogs. Uh, also white papers, videos, and webinars are causing people to, um, to get involved. It's nice to see more and more industry experts um, sharing their expertise, their knowledge, their experience, and people working in the field, taking the time to take advantage of that and not only um, pay attention but pose a few questions, um, learn, learn more about how they can do their jobs better. Just on the webinar front, I know that we processed, I think it was 77 webinars in 2015. Wow. Wow. Yeah, with registrations ranging from, you know, 100 for those niche webinars that are so customized, up to over 1,000 people registered to attend a webinar by one of the industry experts. Um, that's, so an average of about 500 people are registering for these webinars and learning a lot, sharing a lot, and I think the community is really tighter and stronger for that reason. Yeah, the technology changes very quickly, so it's always good to take that educational approach to marketing, I think. So now I thought we'd take a look at some highlights and bloopers from our uh, last 49 episodes, so we'll cut to that now. Happy 2014 from our... Yeah, try again. Hello and happy... Uh, <laughs> Hello and happy new year from Frequency Matters, the uh, industry... I don't know what this is. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a little rusty. Uh, Announcement that uh, Anarin has been uh, acquired by Veritas. Yeah, that was that was pretty yeah. big. What, yeah. what was going on with that? Um, you should have asked. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Pat Hindle. And uh, what do we got going on this Let's week, Pat? Okay, sure. <laughs> Did I screw up the ending again. <laughs> no, you did fine. <laughs> no, you wrapped it. You, you you flew it right in. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Um, um, it's mobile SATCOM, so mil sorry, let me do that again. And uh, we're both sitting here with ties that have been cut in half because uh, we wanted to highlight that there is a no tie policy. No tie zone. In, uh, yeah, that's right, down in, uh, in Tampa this year, the uh, organizers have asked people to leave their ties, make it more casual affair, and if you happen to wear down a, a, a tie down to Tampa, they just might cut it off. Plans for the fourth? Are you uh, you out of here? I'm out of here in a okay. couple of days. I'll be heading down to sunny Florida. Okay, great. And, uh, Some time on the beach. Yep. Be and wearing the same attire I have on now. Okay, great. And I uh, will be doing the same. So, as you can see, we're in the holiday spirit here, sporting our uh, Santa hats, uh, customized with the uh, Smith chart on them. So we're in the microwave holiday spirit. Yeah, a lot of craft went into that Smith chart. <laughs> it was a lot of work, actually. And I see you're wearing your favorite sweater there. Yes, I, it's a great sweater. My wife made it for me. And the cover story is about a wideband omnidirectional microwave cloaking technique, and they use a fractal array to accomplish that. So it's very uh, interesting technology. So yeah, Gary and I will uh, demonstrate. Uh, if we were to wrap ourselves in this uh, fractal array, we would disappear. I'm going to try to be a little funny about the um, women in microwave engineering fashionable wearable technology. And then there was actually a uh, wearables uh, display right on the exhibition floor, which I think, Richard, you took a look at that. Yeah, I went to see that. I mean, I went to see what the um, RF and microwave engineer will be wearing this season. <laughs> <laughs> wow, everything's shaking. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we're on. As you can see, we're in vacation mode here, shooting from Plum Island in Newberry, Massachusetts. And uh, we wanted everybody to feel relaxed in being able to watch our issues and our uh, episode here, even when they're on vacation. Right. It's nice to be out here on the beach, Plum Island. I think I read somewhere that there was a nine-foot squid that showed up on offshore <laughs> here on the beach back in 1980. We'll have to look out for that, Let's huh? hope that doesn't happen today. Yeah, I'll keep an eye out. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry guys, but what I realized this week is that we're the old guard of the microwave industry because I've been getting down with the kids at the career platform. <laughs> Welcome back to Frequency Matters. We now have two special guests. We have David Vai, former editor, and also the original co-host with me on this uh, episode. And we have Carl Sheffers, our publisher, who lets us do all this crazy stuff and pays for it. So David, you're back in the software EDA industry now and yeah. very expert yeah. in that area about what's going on. What do you see as trends in 2015? Well, before I say that, I'd like to congratulate you and the journal on, on 50 
wonderful episodes. It's great. I, I, I uh, am very impressed that you've kept it going. I, I enjoy watching them from a different vantage point now. But uh, congratulations. Thank you. You know, trends in the EDA, they, they follow the industry trends, you know, and it's the stuff that you guys write about all the time in the journal, and, and I enjoy reading. Um, you know, uh, hardware continues to get smaller and ubiquitous wireless everywhere, so, you know, driven by IoT, which I heard you mention at the, at the top of the episode. That drives what we do in the development of our EDA, you know, with structures getting smaller and more complex, new materials, there's more reliance on electromagnetics, uh, for instance, so, you know, we continue to develop our uh, Axiom, which is our planar tool, and Analyst, which is our 3D tool, but we also recognize the need to, to reach out to other uh, EM simulation tools, such as, you know, the, the from Sonnet or, or ANSYS. Yeah, the uh, interoperability. CST, the interoperability. Trend, yeah. we, we wrote about that yeah. uh, a couple years ago in the journal. Um, so that, that plays a big part in our development, and, and we support that um, quite strongly, and, and each year we develop more capability to make kind of the path of data flowing back and forth. So, I mean, for EDA, it's, it's, it's managing that data, uh, increasingly more data for what customers are doing. And it always seems like hardware development is pushing the software. So we kind of go hand in hand yeah. in that development. But so, you always have to be at the leading edge because you're involved in the research Us and, and test yeah. and measurement and yeah, I mean, it, it, it's a communal thing that we're, you know, developing, uh, you know, next generation hardware and, and EDA software, you know, changes every year becomes more capable, solves bigger problems, more automation, trying to take more of the burden off the engineer, and, and, I, and, and try to support design reuse, you know, that, you know, you, you, very um, complex designs you build are the platform for your next generation platform uh, design, you know, so, so being able to capitalize on, on design in the software and build on top of that is, is a growing thing. You know, I see growing need for, in addition to the EM simulation, system simulation, where, where people can do quick studies of, you know, behavioral models to, you know, mix and match components and see what the overall impact on the, uh, on the system is. And that's especially true as we see uh, Internet of Things. There are going to be a lot of companies that will maybe have small RF groups within a larger company that we wouldn't associate with microwaves, and, and they might not have a lot of expertise. So they'll need tools that are intuitive. And they'll be basically, they won't be designing the chips, but they'll be using the chips and they'll need to know how that, that all goes together. So we, we see that as a growing trend among our user base, um, which leads to another trend. And I think it's part of what my role is with National Instruments, uh, you know, hiring an ex-editor, is uh, managing our content, our conversation with our end users. You know, we're taking on the role of educator. In, in large part. Yeah, kind and of what Kristen was talking about, educating yeah, the community. Yeah, it, it's very important. It's become a, a full-time job now that, that we um, develop content that's in line with what our customers do. We help educate them and we present it in a lot of different formats, which is critical why we work with, with trade magazines such as the Journal, um, not just in print, but the, uh, all the online offerings that you have because, you know, a lot of, you know, the, the uh, importance of videos and webinars as a learning vehicle is, is super critical for us, and I, I think you know it, it, it's testament to how many webinars you, you ran last year, and I, I think that just keeps increasing every year, that, that that's how the community is getting their information, is, is sitting down with an expert, watching a 40-minute talk, and then being able to engage through Q&A with that expert. You know, are you seeing the same thing? Yeah, and uh, I think uh, video in particular has become a powerful tool in mm -hmm. uh, B2B marketing, yeah. and. Um, just one of the many ways that we can engage and interact with our audience along with social media and live events and yeah. webinars as Kristen pointed out and uh, you know really an important uh, tool just one of many these right. days which makes it pretty exciting and you know we actually launched uh, as you know a, a new video platform on, okay. our, on yeah. our website this year mm -hmm. that's got hundreds of uh, educational uh, videos and demos from some of the major trade shows uh, along with the webinars and this series, so yeah. uh, it's yeah. been uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, I I, I, I check it out regularly, and it, it's very uh, it's very informative. I like the way that it's organized, um, and, and I'm glad you mentioned trade shows too, because that that's an important one for us as well. And and uh, we've always been a we're, we're a, a corporate sponsor of the EDI Con in China, and and you guys are are going to launch the uh, similar show in Boston of next year. Yeah. And that, with European Microwave Week and what we do at the micro apps at IMS, gives us kind of global coverage of live engagements with, with customers. So we can host workshops, you know, so that you've provided that platform with EDICon in, in the U.S. now and, and China uh, is hugely critical to us. And, and we find these kind of workshops are very important to, uh, you know, to just 
drill deeper. You know, some, a topic that you can't cover in a 40 minute, it's a full day or right. a larger uh, workshop. You know, we're, we're seeing a trend towards that. And those kind of conferences that are industry focused, more hands on, are critical to our ability to reach out to customers and, and educate them. It's been really successful in China. We're excited about uh, bringing that model to uh, Boston yeah. next year. Yeah, no, it's great. I'm sure it'll be a huge success. Yeah, and uh, Carl, you have a special announcement to make. And we even have a graphic that goes with it. I, I do. Before I, I say that, I'm, I'm very happy to be here as well to help celebrate the 50th edition of uh, Frequency Matters. And uh, I first want to thank um, you know our viewers for tuning in and, and supporting this along with our, our sponsor, uh, Mini Circuits. I'd also like to thank uh, our hosts, uh, David, who are former host and now special yeah. guest, and uh, Pat Handel and Gary LaRude, who have yeah. done uh, such a great job of making this, uh, I think, informative and entertaining, uh, both. And uh, last but not least, uh, I do have an announcement to make that uh, this will be Kristen, who has uh, done a great job of hosting this, and this will be uh, Kristen's final episode of Frequency Matters, I'm, I'm very sad to say. and. Uh, that after 27 years with Microwave Journal, that Kristen is, uh, is going to join her husband, Mark, in helping him to grow his business. And, uh, you know, Kristen's been a fantastic colleague. She's a, a friend to all of us at Microwave Journal, and uh, we're going to miss her dearly, and uh, we should wish her great success in her new endeavor. Yes, it'll be a big hole to fill, so we have to get busy on that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So I'd like to thank our sponsor, Mini Circuits. You can find out more about their products at minicircuits.com. Uh, Mini Circuits has been with us since the beginning, and they've signed up again for 2016. But uh, keep in mind, there still is one sponsorship spot open. I hope you'll continue to watch Frequency Matters, and thank you for joining us today.